Good evening and a very warm welcome to all of you who joined us live for this much awaited evening. I am Tuhina. I support book development and dissemination efforts at Parag. This year, I also supported the year long process for the Parag honor list, which meant that for many months straight, my desk was stacked with books that came in as submissions. And I was honestly so thrilled that for the first time, I had many and enough reasons to stop all other work and just read. And here we are today. Today is also International Mother Language Day, and what better occasion to celebrate literature and language, words and meanings that shape us in so many different ways. The Parag Honorist launched the coveted occasion, not just for Tata Trust and Parag, but also for the children's literature sector at large. And it gives me great pleasure to host it today. Welcome to the Parag Honorist 2023 launch. Tata Trusts are among India's oldest non-sectarian philanthropic organizations. And education is one of our key focus areas. The portfolio focuses on enhancing its quality and equity, particularly for marginalized communities. In line with this vision, the Parag Initiative of Tata Trust supports the development of and access to good quality children's literature in Indian languages. We believe in the power of good stories and strive to make joyful reading a part of every childhood. Every year, the Parag Honor List features a curated collection of outstanding books in English and Hindi for children and young adults. It was first launched in 2020, and this year we complete four years of this initiative. As part of our dissemination efforts for PHL in the past year, we've also sent out the entire PHL set as what is called the Parag Honor List Book Box to more than 500 nonprofits, independent libraries, and learning centers across the country who are who fostering reading spaces. We will hear more about Paragonalist 2023 in a while, but I will take a pause here to introduce you to our esteemed guests and panelists for today's evening. Please join me in welcoming our first guest, Uma Mahadevan, the additional Chief Secretary at the Department of Rural Development and Panchayati Raj Government of Karnataka. In her position, Uma Ma'am guides the three-tiered Panchayat Raj institutions towards the holistic development of rural areas in the state. Under her able leadership, she's trying to revive almost 6,000 libraries across the state. Welcome, Uma Ma'am. Our next guest, Kanishka Gupta, is a literary agent. He's a writer and publishing commentator, best known for his acclaimed series for Scroll.in called Publishing and the Pandemic. He's the founder for Writer's Site, the largest literary agency and consultancy in South Asia. Lovely to have you with us, Kanishka. Thank you so much. We are thrilled to have one of our jury members also join us today, Mini Srinivasan. Uh, Mini is a children's writer and teacher educator with an extensive experience in early childhood and primary education, particularly in rural contexts. Her books for preteens have also won the Sahitya Academy, Bal Sahitya Puraskar, and the Hindu Young World Award. Welcome, Mini. Finally, we have with us Amrita Patwardhan from Tata Trust. Amrita has the education portfolio and she has represented the trust on the National Mission on Libraries and has been on multiple committees appointed by the MHRD and NCERT to review national programs. Amrita has been instrumental in seeding and driving the Parag Initiative of Tata Trust. Welcome, Amrita. We will soon launch, welcome. We will soon launch the Parag on the list 2023. But before that, I wanted to take some time to briefly take you through the PHL process. For the fourth edition of PHL, we received a total of 279 entries in English and Hindi across the age group of early readers, young readers, and young adults. The submissions were open for original titles in English and Hindi, and uh, they had to be published between October 2021 and September 2022. We called for entries in four quarters, uh, and the jury was involved in reading and reviewing the books throughout the year and decided on the final list at the end of the year. I will take this opportunity to thank all the 33 publishers who sent in their entries for this year's PHL. And a special thank you to all the 10 publishers who sent in their entries for PHL for the first time. Our jury for this year comprised of six members. For the Hindi jury, we had Arun Kamalji, who's a poet, essayist, and children's author. Gur Bachanji, who is an educator and has is, is an editor for a number of children's magazines. And Shelly Satyu, who's a playwright and thespian, and she works particularly with uh, theater for children and young adults. For the English jury, we had Prachi Palza, professor and storyteller. 
Tejasvi Shivanand, uh, library educator and curator, and Mini Srinivasan, who is on the panel today. Before we move on to the launch of the catalog and review the books that have made it to the list this year, I would like to request Mini to give us an overview and share her thoughts on the process for PHL 2022. Over to you, Mini. Uh, thank you, Tuina. Uh, so uh, this process has been, uh, this is the second time that I'm on the jury for the Parag uh, Actually, it starts with deciding what the criteria are for choosing the books, because that's one of the very important parts of this process. And the very first uh, jury for the very first list uh, where it took almost two days to thrash out what the criteria should be. Uh, subsequent juries have refined this criteria and each jury spends some time maybe, you know, taking out a few points or adding a few points so that we're basically all on the same page. This year, that process was done uh, online. Uh, after this uh, began the exciting and rather terrifying time when uh, books would keep arriving and uh, you had to put all your work aside and uh, look at these books. So uh, like Tuina said, it's so exciting to be able to spend so many months reading children's books. Otherwise, you consider that, you know, that's something you're really not able to do with the rest of your work going on. Uh, sometimes it's delightful. Sometimes it's a treat. Sometimes it's, it can also be a punishment because not all books are wonderful. Sometimes they're wonderful books, but they're not something that interests you particularly, but they have to be all gone through anyway. So this uh, process would go on in patches as the books came to us. Uh, one of the things that was uh, very useful was that uh, the Parag team had created a Google form in which we could give our feedback. So, uh, so that this was collated as we went along. Uh, we, the three jury members didn't interact at all during this process. Uh, and that was, I mean, it was very important to do that because we didn't want to influence each other. Interestingly, we are very, three very, very different people, uh, different age groups, uh, one man and two women. So that uh, was that made a very interesting dynamic that got a lot of different perspectives. And I think that that is also a very important part of the process. Uh, we finally met uh, in Delhi for the final thrashing out of uh, our uh, list. Uh, we had got, I think, more than 150 books in English. And uh, when we met, we thought, okay, probably, you know, we must have said, all said yes to maybe 30 or 40 of these. And then we have to discuss the rest. And we were absolutely shocked on the first day because we were told that there were only six books that all of us had said, yes, they should be on the list. And we thought, this is the end. We are going to be here for a week. And, you know, this process is never going to end. But uh, it was amazing because we uh, went through the rest of the books in two days. And uh, the jury, well, we were able to convince each other either about why we liked a book and it should be included or why we didn't want the book to be included. And uh, it was really nice to be able to get another person's perspective because I have a particular way of looking at books and the other two jury members sometimes had quite different ways of looking at them. And I think it really worked out beautifully. We got a whole lot of uh, different perspectives. Uh, and at the end of two days, uh, we got this list uh, I think the process, uh, what the process really taught us is that it's very important to have this diversity in the jury. Uh, I think uh, women uh, are predominant in this whole field of children and children's literature. So it's very important to have a man. And I think it's very important to have different age groups. I remember the very the first time I was on the jury, there was a book that we uh, you know, discussed for ages. And that was to do with the language used in the book. There were like four letter words used in the book. And though it was for young adults, uh, my perspective from my age was that absolutely no. And some of the younger jury members felt, you know, this is, this is how children talk and this is for young adults, it's okay kind of thing. So I think those perspectives are very important. Um, so yeah, it's been a great process. And I think we have finally come out with a wonderful collection of books. I'm very excited that the children get to read these books and libraries get to see them. Really excited to launch the list now. Thank you so much, Vidhi. Uh, what you were talking about what brought back so many memories of the process and something that was just fun for me could be tiring for you, reading so many <laughs> literature. 
good and bad. Uh, so yes, thank you so much. Um, and now for the part that we've all been waiting for, Uma Ma'am, Kanishka, Mini, and Amrita, I would like to request you to open the ribbons and hold up the catalog and pose for a photo op. Thank you so much. I hope someone took a screenshot. Thank you. This year's PHL catalog is a combined catalog to English and Hindi, and it has a total of 52 books. It showcases books in three categories, early readers, young readers, and young gadgets. And for each book, uh, you will find an author, illustrator, and publisher detail, along with an annotation uh, about the book. With this year's honor list, we've also attempted to draw attention to regional languages. Uh, for the featured books where translations were available, we undertook a parallel translations review and the recommended translations have been mentioned uh, with the book details. We would now like to play a short video for our audience which showcases the English and Hindi books that have made it to Parag on a list 2023 across fiction, non-fiction and poetry. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you so much, Vivek, and congratulations, everyone. This year's English list uh, comprises of 31 books, with, and the set is rich with diverse themes. There are wordless books which are really for all ages. There are books that capture a myriad of emotions. Uh, there are books with layered experiences of conservation, freedom, uh, loss, friendships. All of this is packed in one set, and all of this is extremely relevant to readers today. The Hindi list is the longest list this year, which has it has 21 titles. It features some very poignant topics addressing people and wildlife that form the world around us. There is humor, there's folklore, and there are titles that span the, the themes of adolescence, nature, art, identity. All of this also greatly adds to contemporary children's literature in Hindi that's available today. Uh, both the English and Hindi list also features some stalwart in the field, of course but also many fresh and upcoming voices in children's writing and illustrations, which was extremely heartening to see this year. For the audience, if you'd like to look at the detailed catalog, this list is already up on our website, www.paragreads.in, and the link is also pinned in the comment section. Do take out some time to check them. Um, this brings us to the end of the announcement. Uh, congratulations again to all the publishers, authors, illustrators, and the book creation team who've made these books with so much care and consideration. Congratulations.
we will now be moving on into our next section where we will speak about uh, curated lists and their impact on creating informed readers in our country today. We have Uma Ma'am with her work on reviving the public library movement in Karnataka. Kanishka, who's been a literary critic and is an agent of repute. Mini, a children's author herself and a teacher educator. And Amrita, of course, with her vast experience of designing and leading educational programs towards equitable change. While I have my questions here, all those who've joined us, please do feel free to key in your questions for our speakers in the comment section. Please also mention the speaker that you're addressing the question to. Uh, we will take some of your questions uh, in the last 10 minutes of this uh, interaction. Uh, Uma ma'am, I'd like to begin my discussion uh, with you. You and your team have done some incredible work in the revival of public libraries in Karnataka through your Light of Reading program. Um, I'd like to understand how you think fostering an ecosystem of reading and love for literature can help us create more informed and engaged citizens. Thank you. Thank you, Tohina. And uh, thanks for inviting me to be a part of this lovely um, program. Uh, congratulations to all the winners. And uh, as I just mentioned in the chat box, uh, those books make me feel like I want to read each one of them, the English and the Hindi. I hope there are going to be books in other languages coming soon, um, because we definitely would like to see books in Canada. Uh, and the reason I say this is because we have, um, I've been very fortunate that I and my team have been able to work as a part of my regular work um, on the revival and renovation of nearly 6,000 libraries, rural libraries across the state of Karnataka. Uh, these libraries have already been there for some time, but in 2019, they were handed over to our department and to the panchayats, the rural communities. Uh, and during COVID, it was amazing to see that while schools were closed, the rural communities and the panchayats actually worked on giving a new life to the libraries. Uh, the Light of Reading program, Udo Bileku, is something where we only had three main goals. We said that every library should be renovated and have a children's section. Every child in rural Karnataka should have a free membership library membership, every child aged six to 18. And books should be collected as far as possible, apart from what we already purchase and give to the libraries, books should be collected through donations so that we make it into a public and community movement. And what we're seeing is the result of all those efforts that uh, communities just took to this because I think it was filling a very great need. Um, Till now, in a little over two years, 3.3 million children have enrolled free of charge as members, which is really quite amazing. Uh, children uh, from government school, children from private schools, children who are teenagers, children from hostels, um, uh, coming to the libraries, pre-primary children, and even Anganwadi age children are coming to the libraries with their parents. We have collected over a million, 1.1 million was the last figure, but we're still getting more books. 1.1 million books as donations. And the important thing is the majority of the books that have come are picture books. And that made me realize that children um, are so starved, rural Karnataka, especially children in government schools, um, children in our rural communities, children from less privileged homes are so starved for picture books that, um, the, you know, irrespective of all the other nice things that are there in the libraries, the bean bags and the child size sofas and the indoor plants and everything that's being done by the rural communities to make those rooms beautiful. What is really exciting to the child is to be able to open a picture book. And so you, you see these children just diving into the books and they're open mouth. They're lying on those bean bags and they're curled up and they're sitting with, you know, cross legs and um, they're sitting, even newspapers now. So from picture books, they're graduating to reading every single thing. And that's what children should do. They should read every single word that they can see around them, whether it's on a bottle of medicine or on a newspaper or in an advertisement or, or on the side of a bus and definitely stories, stories and more stories. And so that's what we're trying to do. Um, we feel that uh, reading um, 
enriching, in reading any amount of material is just going to enrich their minds. We know that reading builds imagination, builds empathy, uh, apart from proficiency. It leads to, you know, you read more, you read better. Uh, but apart from that, it also takes, transports children to other worlds, teaches them compassion, teaches them empathy, teaches them how to express their emotions, teaches them words to understand the feelings that they're going through. And so I think there's a wealth of knowledge and a wealth of wisdom that comes from reading, whether it's fiction or nonfiction, reading about science, reading about other ages, um, reading about the constitution. I was, uh, I'll end with this little tiny anecdote, which I heard. We had celebrated the uh, constitution day by asking children to read the preamble in our, um, in our panchayat libraries. And sometime in December or January, I visited a library and I was asking the kids, you know, what are the books that you like to read? And so they, they talked about sports books and they talked about comics. And then one little kid said, I like to read storybooks. And I also like to read India's constitution. Oh. <laughs> that was just, that was just um, you know, so amazing. It stayed with me. Of course, he'd read the preamble, but it was, it was terrific. Uh, so that stayed with me. And I think reading just leads to uh, places that none of us have been to before. And it's leading certainly the children of Karnataka to, to wild and wonderful ways. And I look forward to seeing where this project ends up. Thank you. That's so heartening to hear, Uma, ma'am. I mean, I couldn't stop smiling and I could see nobody could stop smiling. Thank you so much for sharing, uh, you know, anecdotes and insights from your work. And taking on from what you were saying about creating access uh, for children, uh, whether it be by, you know, providing them with a, with a stipulated number of books or just creating that safe space where, where they can read what they want to read. I'd like to ask, uh, Mini, uh, you, how do you think uh, uh, good quality children's literature uh, shapes the reading journey of a child? Uh, I think what uh, Umanji just now said was absolutely uh, what was in my mind, and she put it so well that uh, re you you know you begin reading, and from reading, the whole world opens out to you. Mm -hmm. What is uh, also interesting is that even children who are not good readers otherwise in class, who are not doing good in reading, the minute they come into the library space, they become different, they become a different person. Because that fear in class of, you know, being unsuccessful is not there with the book. There's no such thing as success or, you know, failure. You're just enjoying the book. Uh, a librarian also told me a very interesting point which stayed with me, which is that children who are not readers, not enthusiastic readers, often tend to go towards nonfiction because they might pick a subject that is of interest to them. They're not really totally into stories and all that, but because they're interested in that subject, they will go to that book. And that could then lead them to become readers and then open up their world more. So that's why having these different genres and uh, you know different kinds of books in the library is also very important because different children have different needs. Uh, what happens, uh, unfortunately, in the classroom is that it becomes something that you that you either can do or can't do. And uh, I think the more libraries that there are in the schools, our teachers will also become more relaxed about this. That, you know, even if you're reading, stumbling, making mistakes, or you're not able to read aloud, you're just reading it in your mind, all those things become acceptable as reading and uh, children lose that fear and, you know, come closer to books. Uh, of course, reading also then has its own purpose in education too. A good reader is always a person who will then be able to tackle all subjects, including math, more confidently because you can understand what is being uh, you know put on the blackboard or in the textbook or in other books so it definitely has a relationship with uh, your education but it has an equally important relationship with your life so you understand the world better you become more empathetic to the world hopefully you become more uh, uh, a more peaceable person because you understand the world better uh, all these possibilities are there in books so it's very important that these uh, you know, books of this quality go to children when they're very young, when their minds are impressionable. And they have, uh, I remember when we were looking at the books this year, there were a lot of books about uh, India and Indian history and the freedom movement because this was the 75th anniversary. And I opened the books with a little bit of fear because I was wondering whether a particular type of political agenda is going to be pushed through books. But I was so delighted to see that the books were, most of them were so good 
they they were uh, you know they were opening up the history of uh, modern india bringing in all the different streams that have made modern india not just like a single narrative i think these things are very important for children so that that reading journey has actually two facets one is in education and one is in life and both of them of course are the interrelated yes thank you mini i think what you what the part, the point you say about a good book being a balancing act between uh, you know what a child uh, will relate with and what a child you know we would we would like to introduce the child to and even when we introducing a topic we introduce it in a more balanced manner uh, that's what i guess a good book does uh, so thank you for that uh, so uh, we've talked about the consumer so to say of children's literature children teachers parents readers and that forms one part of the ecosystem uh, the children's literature ecosystem and then there's the other bit the publishers who are working closely with authors illustrators and distributors and in a huge way they also shape the narrative of the system and they play a huge role in accessibility um kanishka given your extensive experience in publishing how do you think recognitions like the paragon list or recognitions to books authors and publishers influence readership and impact the larger children's literature ecosystem so um you know my engagement with uh, children's writing was rather surface level uh, until uh, the second half of 2022 when i was uh, approached by kavita sabarwal of neer school and she she wanted me to uh, undertake a study on uh, you know the state of children's publishing and i'll tell you why the engagement was superficial and not very um, regular it's because the children's publishing uh, ecosystem within the larger indian publishing ecosystem works very differently in that uh, you know authors have one on one stronger one on one uh, relationships with their editors it's the editors who most of the times reach out to authors existing and new ones with ideas because a lot of commissioning is happening where the editor approaches a author with an idea so in that case it's difficult for an agent to you know uh you know add any value and also uh, the the advances while the advances across uh, genres in india for for books are rather low and if you look at the advances in the uk and the us and even european countries very low in comparison they are extremely extremely low in children's publishing uh, and for 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 writers for even il- for illustrators so so but but when uh, kavita uh, gave me this opportunity i thought maybe i should just uh, like say yes and do some research and try and find out uh, what what is it that is selling because it's not as if children's books and books uh, you know picture books by the uh, picture books for children and young adult they are not selling it's just that uh, there are two or three indian writers who have monopolized this genre and uh, publishers in india i mean they they face severe competition from best selling authors overseas you know because the world is uh, you know now so closely connected because of you know social media and children are so clued in so uh, as far as uh, uh, the prizes in uh, uh, parag honor in particular uh, are concerned i think the fact that parag has been at it for the last 3 or 4 years and you know they have been uh, you know you know promoting and discovering quality children's books and there is there is a continuity so i think now it is seen as a brand uh, there is also an attempt to promote the books on the honor list throughout the year at festival now the the book box subscription for instance it guarantees a certain you know purchase from uh, parag itself you know in order to you know they distribute them to different libraries so i see i see that that is an important step and uh, and um, but 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 the major issue here is uh, that uh, the publishing uh, the the printing and the publishing of books in the space especially picture books you know books requiring uh, like special paper they they have become very difficult you know given the paper cost uh, uh, increase and also the gst which has to be borne by the publisher so and while parag is promoting uh, and also like facilitating the production of uh, you know books uh, especially with ngo publisher i think uh, uh, all of you will be quite surprised to know that even the the biggest publishers the multinational publishers with the you know a very vibrant children's list they are struggling to uh, you know uh, to come up with decent margins uh, were they to take on you know uh, books uh, in this in some of the genres in children's books 
I think awards are important, uh, but uh, uh, the fact that uh, Parag is doing something uh, regularly, there has not, not been any break uh, ever since uh, the honor list was announced. Because if you see COVID, uh, I mean, led to the, the closure of some very important literary prizes for children, good books. Yeah. Uh, Crossford had a very vibrant uh, children's category. The entire the entire award has shut down. So in that sense, Parag is important. But you know what, what I would recommend now is that Parag uh, uh, and, and the people involved with the, the honor list, now they look internationally they look at other media like you know i mean i was talking to lakshmi last year because she was you know helping me with some of the research for my study and she said that while you know attempts are being made to uh, you know travel to bologna some of the book fairs but i think that's an important step because authors are unless unless they have you know day jobs or unless they are from privileged background they are finding it increasingly impossible to write uh, books in the genre illustrators uh, are taking very very long to get back to you know uh, you know publishers and authors for commission projects because you know they have they 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 are they have uh, day jobs or they are illustrating you know uh, you know for for magazines for other brands because you know so there is always you know delays in publication so I I would I, I would say that perhaps uh, institutions like Parag uh, uh, they they should they should look internationally they should even look at you know like maybe you know having collaborations with uh, film studios you know because many of these books you know they can be they can be turned into you know animation they can be turned into you know uh you know series so yeah i mean but, but parag is playing a very important role and i'm also very appreciative of the the the, the award uh you know that you've instituted for uh like uh, like a body of work by an author and an illustrator big little, yeah, yeah the yeah. big little award um and um i mean even during my presentation i had stressed on the need for fellowships for children's writers and illustrators and i know that parag uh, has uh, is has instituted the riaz fellowship where illustrators you know i mean they are given uh, you know training and they are provided a space where they can work and uh, i was told that of the 80 uh, uh, illustrators who've been part of the uh, fellowship at least 20 are now uh, working full time you know illustrating books in Hindi, in English and other languages, uh, so I think it's it's so we uh, this genre is facing a lot of competition, not just from uh, you know uh, uh, like international publishers, authors, uh, but also from uh, you know um, other forms of entertainment and distractions for children. You know because these days, like six year old, seven year old, they have their own iPads, they have access to you know movies and. And, and, and they don't even mind, uh, you know, view, watching films in different languages. So many kids are like such huge fans of, you know, Korean films. And, and they, it's, it's fine if it's, it's, if it's dubbed and if they don't understand most of it. So I think that is something that needs to be done. But uh, I have not, like, in my 12 or 13 years in publishing, what I have seen uh, 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 in the honors list year, year after year is the, the range of books that are chosen, you know, I mean, when uh, the first slide was shown, uh, uh, which which mentioned the publishers who had submitted, you know, uh, mm. uh, books for the yeah. for the honor list for the consideration, I was quite surprised because I haven't heard of so many of these publishers. Mm. And so, so it, it 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 is important. It is uh, uh, it's it's doing cutting edge work. But I mean, I think it should just continue and maybe make forge new partnerships and associations, you know, and perhaps even look at uh, funding, uh, you know, some. Uh, books uh, that are being published by MNCs and not just by, you know, like NGOs. I mean, if it sounds politically politically incorrect, so be it because publishers are struggling across the board to sell books. Yes. Thank you so much, Kanishka, for giving us a range of uh, challenges also and things to be done also and things that Parag can also do. And uh, Amrita, I'd also, I'd also like uh, to understand from you, uh, Kanishka, Said that one of the things that that has been working for the on, the Parag on the list and other awards is the continuity that has been maintained and the recognitions that recognition that has been provided to a diverse range of publishers. Uh, where do you see Parag on the list and Parag work? Like, what do you envision for Parag Parag in the coming years? And how do you think it will impact the children's literature ecosystem? 
Thanks, Tuhina. Um, so I think PHL is Tata Trust small but a determined kind of an effort to put out a um, credible and a non-partisan kind of book recommendation out there for the reading community each year. And while the list is the culmination of it, it's a sort of a process is as important also effort that we are trying to put it out through a forum which is not affiliated to a particular publishing house so uh, and jury which is drawn based on their credible work in the sector. I think one is hoping that over a period of time, more and more readers, schools, librarians, selection committees, parents, and of course, children will want to refer to this list to get recommendations of books that they may like to browse and read and add to their libraries and collections. Uh, and we really hope that this in turn will increase demand for quality books by visibilizing good books. Uh, and I feel that as compared to a uh, couple of decades ago, when we started in a very small way, our work in this sector, uh, this kind of recommended book list is even more important today because now the volume of number of books getting published each year is increasing and hence the need for a credible recommendation also goes up. But building on what uh, Kanishka just said, I think PHL is not a standalone effort and that kind of any book list or a recommendation or an award in itself is frankly only a drop in the ocean. And it's really multiple kinds of efforts that are needed to build the ecosystem. Tata Trust through Parag is playing its small role, but all the other my fellow panelists and many who are in possibly in the audience, I think each and every effort of activating uh, a library space, because it's really very, very heartening to hear Uma Ma'am today uh, on the panel, but I really literally draw my um, sort of booster dose uh, from her Twitter post, because the images that she posts, uh, the kind of engagement uh, children uh, are showing around books, it's really, really, I think, critical that vibrant public access to quality books. So while collection is critical, access is extremely important. And then equally important are the adults who mediate that space. So be it a librarian, a teacher, a parent who uh, is able to facilitate a child, but also knows that the child needs to be given lots of freedom to choose uh, while you would gently also keep recommending. So I think that whole ecosystem, uh, which one is attempting to nurture along with all our pub, sort of, you know, pub, fellow publishers and uh, other partners and many other players, because this is a really evolving space. In the last 20 years, we have seen some really great gains in this but so much so much more needs to be done and i think uh my, while we are seeing a lot more purchases uh reaching government schools in terms of quality of those books so much more can be done because fortunately better quality books are now coming out but that doesn't necessarily mean that they are reaching children who really deserve to sort of be able to enjoy uh, this quality content. So I think it's a long and a slow process and we have to be ready for it. It's nothing is going to change immediately, but it's really by joining hands with multiple efforts that hopefully we will energize the children's literature space uh, over the years to come. Thank you, Amrita, for, for summarizing Farag's vision so precisely. And I'll, I'll take on your last point where you talk about uh, the, the number of books in a library uh, in relation to the number of good quality books that children have access to. And Uma Ma'am, I'd like to come back to you with your extensive work in the field. What are some challenges that you see, uh, that you faced when you were introducing, when, you, when we're talking about introducing good quality children's literature in free and public library spaces, especially in rural India? Yeah, thanks for that. Uh, so one of the things uh, uh, definitely is language. We need books in uh, children's mother tongues. Uh, we also need bilingual books. You know, there's picture and then there's uh, something in Kannada, then something in English could be on another page. Um, that's something that's very good. But uh, more important is uh, than language is the question of context. 
um, books for children in rural India and for children in um, also uh, government schools, children from less privileged homes uh, need to talk to their context. They, they need to understand. Books can be very pretty. They can be lovely stories, but they can be enormously privileged and they can be enormously out of touch with the realities of a child. And so what we're doing is actually something quite interesting. We have started um, getting groups of, um, so last year we had groups of Anganwadi workers and we did a right shop, three day right shop to actually do this. And we're thinking of doing it again with illustrators as part of it. So the illustrators, part of the process, instead of being given, the Anganwadi workers produced lovely stories, fabulous stories. We're thinking of doing this with children, with, mm -hmm. with uh, primary school teachers, um, maybe one right shop in every district, because we'd like to create, we want lots of material and there are so many stories. Everybody has a story to tell. Everybody has a story within them. I mean, um, somebody said that, didn't they? But, uh, but more importantly, we need stories from every landscape. We need stories talking to that, you know, rocky, bouldery landscape of Humpy or Bellari. We need stories talking to that coastal landscape where children are, you know, um, running across uh, streams and hillocks and things like that. So landscape, nature, all of that, all of the things that, primary age children are observing and relating to needs to be in their context. And so we are working on producing a lot of that um, and, and uh, kind of even producing stories from uh, the communities themselves. Uh, so that's one of the things that we're doing. But uh, even in the meantime, just putting a lot of different books um, from different contexts out there on the shelves and letting kids read in a slightly chaotic way, uh, but a way that, you know, makes sense to them, that they're navigating from this book to something else, looking at a cover maybe, or looking at a story, or looking at an interest. There was a girl from Bidar who uh, sent me a video and she's just delighted. She found a science book and she read about C.V. Raman and dinosaurs and Copernicus and Galileo. So uh, she was thrilled and so were we that that all of this was in that one book. And so that's going to take her someplace else. So um, I really think uh, language and context uh, and talking to children where they are at their level um, the, instead of from a distance, which doesn't make sense, is very important uh, yeah. for reading to, to take them along. But in the absence of all that, anything will do. Yes. That too is something that we're working on. Yes, thank you, Uma. And, and I, I, I'm sure all of us have taken note of the challenges that you've presented. Uh, Mini, I, I, because we're talking about good books uh, and good quality children's literature, and you've reviewed more than 100 books this, for this year's CHL and some more for the previous years. Uh, I'd like to understand uh, what are what are some of your markers for what a good quality children's literature is, and especially for parents and children, parents and teachers, because uh, many a times they're the one who's picking uh, books for their children. So, what are what are some of the things you'd say you'd say defines a good children's book? Okay, uh, yeah, I think it's very important that we as adults are more discriminating. Children will actually read anything you give them because most of the children from underprivileged backgrounds are so desperate that you find them even reading the paper in which the vada pav is wrapped. You know, it's like that bad. So, but we as adults, it's important that we are more discriminatory and uh, look at what... So, uh, the first thing, of course, in a book is how it looks and feels when you take it in your hand. So, the look is important. Uh, the size and shape is important. You know, sometimes people experiment and that experiment doesn't necessarily work out well because a little child of seven sitting cross-legged on the floor is not able to handle that book because it's too long or it's too tall or something. So, you know, how the book feels in the child's hand is important. Uh, along with that, of course, the layout and the illustrations and fonts. I'm, I'm very conscious of fonts because now with, you know, it, it's, all, it's uh, possible to do so much with fonts. Sometimes people do too much 
and the whole thing becomes, you know, it's not an attractive look because you're just going on monkeying around with the fonts. But at the same time, the font is important and the child uh, relates or doesn't relate or is interested and not interested because the font is the right one. Uh, illustrations are, of course, hugely important in uh, children's books. Uh, a range of illustrations and illustrations that show children different contexts very important for them to see their own context. I mean, I think one of the important things that the Para Bonalist does is that it showcases books published in India because English reading children get so many books from around the world uh, that there are so many books which are being published in India about Indian children and which uh, the illustrations also show lives around them is I think very important. And more and more of those are coming out. Uh, a variety in the illustrations also, you know, in the old days, uh, there was a particular type of illustration, which was a children's book illustration. Yeah. Now there is like the sky is the limit. People are doing so many different things with local art forms, with collages and with all kinds of things. So that variety is also important so that each book looks different. Um, after that, of course, that is the language of the book itself. So uh, I think it's important for a parent or a teacher to read the book and to assess if the language is a book has to have literary quality. It can't just be a whole lot of pictures and, you know, sentences describing those pictures. Or it cannot just be like a dry story told with pictures around it. It has to be literature. Even the book with the least amount of text has got to be literature. So it's very important that that language is good. It's, uh, it's I, I mean, I would almost call it poetic, but I mean literary. It's well written. Uh, uh, I, as a writer, I know that it's, it doesn't always come easily. Sometimes you have to go keep going back and, you know, hone the language, change words here. Even for a small book with just like one sentence on each page, the writer has to take the trouble to make it a good piece of writing. Uh, poetry is like, when we were looking at books here, we, were, we really had a tough time, you know, finding good poetry. Because, uh, I mean, just putting book sentences together with rhyming words at the end is not poetry, you know. It has poetry something different. So uh, children's poets is also something that uh, we would love to see more of. Uh, age group, it, it's a very strange thing. I wouldn't say that a book should be for a particular age group. Uh, sure, the writer writes with a particular age group in mind, but it should be a book that anybody enjoys when they pick it up. So... Uh, we had an interesting uh, experience in this time's uh, Parag list. There was a children's book by Suniti Nam Joshi. Now that the list is out, I can talk about it. Uh, and we were, uh, I was like a little worried that it's too dark and too grim for a picture book, you know. It's, it's dystopia, basically. You know, the world is kind of something very bad has happened and the world is taken over by bugs. And I was thinking of this little six-year-old, seven-year-old, and why are we giving this? The minute we shifted it to the young adult section, it became a completely different book because it's so beautiful. It's so powerful. The illustrations are so powerful. You know, so it's like that is there's not like a fixed thing. Some groups, some books are nice for some age groups, but also that book should have a value that anybody can pick up. My most favorite book in the world right now, children's book in the world is uh, Sal Salman Rushdie's Harun and the Sea of Stories. And I have read it to my children from when they were like six onwards. And I still enjoy reading it even now as an uh, adult. So uh, it should have that timelessness. You know, it should not be something. Uh, a lot of books came out during the pandemic, which were about the pandemic. But the minute you read it a year later, there's a sort of feel that, you know, maybe this is like, it doesn't, doesn't have any meaning now. So the, the book should have that quality, which lasts through. Even a book about a pandemic can have a, a lasting quality. It can be something that you can read 10 years later, but it should have that some that some unknown quality in it, which makes it timeless. Uh, and finally, I would say that a book, a good book is one that draws the child into that world. When the child is reading it, uh, he or she should feel, should be completely oblivious to the world. You see children like that, you know, they're just into that book and the sky can fall on their heads and it's not going to disturb them. So it must, it should draw children into it. I think that's the final test of a good book. Thank you, Mini. I think all of these are was very important points. And when Mini was speaking, I was reminded of what another jury member was speaking about in one of the jury, member, uh, jury meetings. He said, uh, a good children's literature is 
not just for children today, but for everyone who was once a child. So I think that sort of summarizes what we're trying to say. Um, I I would like to come back to publishers and the publishing world a little bit, uh, and talk to you, Kanishka, about how can publishers leverage recognition such as Baragon List and other awards that have uh, come up uh, in the last few years to drive sales and disseminations of dissemination of noteworthy books. Um, so I think I think uh, publishers do take. Uh... Uh, like Indian publishers do take all the children's books awards and honor mm -hmm. honor lists such as Talag very seriously. Uh, they are they are they are they are prominently you know uh, shared shared on social media. They are they are part of the press releases. My question is, how do we get uh, these awards uh, mm -hmm. to, to capture the imagination of the readers and also parents because we are we are talking about children's books and that is more important and that is a sort of an attitude shift that we need to work on because publishers take all these awards very seriously be it Parag Honors List, be it uh, um, Neve Awards, be it Peekaboo, uh, be it uh, um, um, the Sahitya Academy Bal Puraskar. So publishers take it seriously in terms of leveraging I think uh, someone from the publisher's publicity team or, you know, someone handling the books that have been chosen, uh, mm -hmm. you know, by Parag or that particular year, they need to be in constant touch with people from your team. And then maybe together, uh, you know, you can, you can come up with interesting, innovative ways where mm -hmm. this, uh, this, this uh, de development or recognition can be leveraged uh, mm -hmm. to drive more sales because that is very important because, you know, uh, the major publishing houses are putting out so many books that uh, mm -hmm. it's very difficult for the publicity teams to focus on one book for more than a month or so, unless it's like a really, really big name, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, so that is something. So I think, I think perhaps uh, the you, Parag honors or, you know, the other awards that we have in India for children's writers, maybe they should have a point of person who, point person who should lies with, you know, publishers. Uh, I, I see NIF doing something like this, you know, and New India Foundation. I mean, they have uh, an independent PR team that is promoting their, uh, not just their new fellows, uh, but the past fellows. And whenever a, a book, uh, you know, that, that was born of NIF or that got the NIF award is published, mm -hmm. you should see the way they promote the book. I mean, frankly, many of these uh, authors and books don't even need the publicity teams at publishing houses to promote them. So I think this has to be uh, an ongoing collaborative process. And since the honor list is a yearly initiative, you have one year to promote these books. Uh, but, but, but I think the prizes are taken quite seriously because, you know, also of the paucity of prizes, how many prizes do we have? I mean, I don't have to tell you what uh, 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 this uh, wow awards that is, uh, you know, uh, instituted by the Dehradun did fest did to their authors. I mean, and one of the authors involved uh, is represented by me. Uh, and just mm -hmm. because she could not attend the prize ceremony, they cancelled the award. I mean, they not only did they withdraw her award, uh, uh, withdrew the prize money, but they cancelled the category. So you know, so we are in a system where there are a limited number of awards. Some of them are of a dubious nature, not the not the major ones. So we have to be like, we have to think of ways on how we can, um, you know, build on, you know, the, the, the brands, the branding of these awards and all, all these awards are quite well known. Um, so I have a question for everyone yeah. because it's, it's very hot and topical. So what do all of you think of the censorship that has rocked uh, the British publishing, children's publishing, you know, you have these sensitivity readers who are like uh, rewriting, you know, uh, uh, se seminal works like Matilda. So I, this is a question for Uma, Mini, everyone, Amrita. Uh, I'm sorry about this, but maybe I, I just wanted to know your opinion. And should something like this be attempted uh, on Indian on children's books in India? Of course not. I mean, that's my. Uh... Look, the so I don't. I don't know. Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead, Mini. The the Roald Dahl uh, thing that I was reading about. I do understand that when you're making fun of somebody who is overweight in a book, mm. it, it is a problem. I think that, uh, you know, it used to be much done much more easily before. 
and uh, children are suffering because of being bullied for being overweight and all that. So I'm not, I wouldn't say that it's entirely wrong, but then I know that this, these things go to a, a limit where then you're not even allowed to say girl and boy. Uh, then, you know, that I don't know where to, where it stops. So I can't really uh, give you an answer to that. But I wouldn't say 100% don't touch any books at all. There needs to be a little bit of an editing. And I think for any book, when you bring it out in a new edition, you sort of take a look at it again. Is there something that's really, uh, you know, we change as human beings, we change and evolve, evolve and our sensitivities change. So maybe there's something that is not absolutely right for today's day. Yeah, I I, uh, I totally agree with that. We evolve and, you know, in Lighten writing about gollywogs and so on is just not something I, I, I can imagine myself reading or would want to read to my kids today. So my litmus test for this is if I'm comfortable reading, I did read a lot, uh, aloud a lot to my kids uh, when they were small. Uh, I still try to do it now, but uh, they're teenagers, so they kind of run in the opposite direction. But um, anything that I'd not be really happy reading aloud, um, that's really, uh, I mean, some touching uh, up for current uh, uh, ways of thinking and feeling, I, I think seems appropriate. Um, but of course, going to extremes in political correctness just seems to be very shallow and superficial. I mean, angularities um, of writers should be allowed to exist to that extent, as long as they don't hurt others. And then, you know, they should take their chances if people still want to read them with angularities. Um, uh, that's how it works. And Kanishka, just to add, I feel this whole issue of banning books is you know it's such a old issue but I think it's much more to also do with the kind of society and the time we live in so I think uh, while no one is saying that books should not be critiqued they should be critiqued but they should certainly not be banned I think the readers also need to make a choice and something that you find uh, problematic should be expressed uh, still in a way in which we can have different you know opinions and be able to hear each other rather than all this banning business is also coming out of a extreme intolerance and the kind of larger issues that we also are seeing in the society so i think both i see them as closely linked and hopefully with libraries and more access and more wider exposure we hopefully will create uh, more spaces where we are willing to listen to each other and multiple perspectives rather than a single truth being pushed down anyone so, Amita, uh, when when, uh, when when i was told that uh, you know the parag uh, promotes the honors list, list at festivals can you elaborate on that because I mean, what do you do at festivals? Do you have, uh, do you sponsor sessions featuring uh, Parag uh, uh, on the list uh, books? Uh, and all yeah, one books? of the efforts, Kanishka, it's an evolving thing and we are open to more ideas as well. But if in uh, festivals or other forums where, you know, uh, we have interested audience, the effort is to try and see whether some of the Authors, illustrators can have direct interactions with children or, for example, also with educators okay. or with more, you know, expert creators are able to engage with more upcoming talent in the sort of sector. So drawing some of these uh, creators out of those who have uh, been also selected in the PHL is one aspect, but making sort of an F conscious effort to uh, sort of uh, have books from PHL visible in multiple locations. So people are aware of the list, they are able to browse, they get to know something like this exists because uh, in, in many ways, while we have made an effort to disseminate, I think we are sort of really at again, at very, very initial stages, maybe a very large number of teachers, uh, parents, readers don't really know that such a list even exists. So getting to sort of in different, different ways. One, of course, is social media, but wherever you can also get physically 
uh, interaction between users and creators enable that and construct it around uh, you know books which we already know are good quality books that's one aspect and the other important uh, thing which we are trying and which we would like to do a lot more which links uh, partly to what Uma ma'am was also saying is to see whether from the PHL list we could pick out books every year which can then be promoted for translation in different languages and also paying attention to the whole issue of quality of translation. So those are two aspects. Thank you. Thank you, Kanishka, for asking those two questions and for Abhita, me and Kumana also to answer them. Uh, so pointedly that almost summarizes our discussion today with uh, with you know the politics of reading and the politics of literature coming into this discussion uh, also. Uh, at Parag, of course, we continue to work towards fostering young readers and celebrating good quality children's literature in Indian contexts and languages. Uh, thank you for answering my questions so patiently. Uh, we now have some questions from the audience uh, that I'll put to you, Uha uh, ma'am. Uh, was uh, has another meeting, so she's dropped off. Uh, so I okay. Uh, there's a question for you, uh, Mini. Uh, a few insights into books and themes that need more space or visibility. Uh, what are some blind spots in children's literature that you see right now? Hmm. Uh, I think. I think. Uh, I think this area is uh, it's getting better, but I think more can be done here, which is really dealing with uh, themes that are difficult for children to handle. Uh, uh, there is a death, of course, which is a big theme. And then there is also difficulties in relationships uh, within families, especially for uh, the older readers. Uh, difficulties with, within uh, siblings, within parents, you know, not necessarily a big thing like a divorce, but just family relationships. I feel uh, that books will help children to understand these better and help them to negotiate better. Uh, I, do, I do find this a bit of a lack in uh, especially the young adult and young reader space. Right. Okay. Thank you, Mini. Uh, and another question for you, uh, Amrita. Why, why is it important, this is anonymous, why is it important for the PHL process to link up closely with libraries across the country? Yeah, I think uh, for any creator of the book or if we are playing the role of curation, uh, the finally the purpose is really to make sure that all these good quality books are going to find its readers and what better place to find readers than a library and especially when we look at in India, we do have urban uh, privileged children who certainly have access and affordability to have their own collection at home. Uh, however, we also know that a very large number of our children don't have that privilege and hence especially important that public libraries and schools are providing uh, sort of seamless access to children and not just of any uh, randomly selected books, but very carefully curated, uh, but a range of books. Again, there one doesn't want to uh, uh, limit their choices, but that choice has to be from a carefully curated uh, list because we do see time and again in our libraries that, you know, books are usually dominated with the certain genres and the panchatantras and the rehashed kind of re- uh, produced content is what does unfortunately continue to dominate what is available uh, for children, even though in the market now we are seeing a lot more diversity. So therefore, I think library's role is both as a point of access and as a point of curation. And of right. course, an adult who would be able to support and facilitate a child. Thank you, Amrita. Thank you for an insightful discussion, Kanishka, Mini, Amrita, and Uma, ma'am. We appreciate you taking time out and being with us here today. Thank you also to our audience who joined us live and stayed through the evening. Do spend some time on our website and on our Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter handles to learn more about Parag's programs and events and about Parag on the list. This year, we've also collaborated with Eureka Bookstore, New Delhi, uh, and PHL books are available to order online from their website. We will also put up a recording of this event on YouTube shortly so that you can revisit and share. 
uh, thank you everyone who's been part of the PHL process this year and to my team who's on the back end today. Take care and good evening.